Michigan. Mr. President, uh, I have uh, six requests for committees to meet during today's session of the Senate. They have the approval of the majority and minority leaders. Duly noted. Mr. President, uh, I rise uh, to oppose the Johnson Amendment. This, this measure would force continued payment of government contractors to build an ill-conceived border wall. Most of these funds were never intended for this purpose. More than $10 billion were redirected from the Department of Defense, and these funds were intended for military installations and functions, such as schools for military children and National Guard equipment. The Biden administration is conducting a comprehensive review of these contracts, led by the Department of Defense and Homeland Security. DHS has recently announced that they will continue work on certain common sense projects on the southern border to address life, safety, environmental, and operational considerations. These decisions will be guided by what is best for our national security, not well-connected government contractors profiting off of hard-earned taxpayer dollars. We need to move, move forward with smart, bipartisan investments that secure both our southern and our northern borders. And we must not look backwards at the former administration's boondoggle. I urge my colleagues to vote no on the Johnson Amendment. Yes, Senator from Wisconsin. In a quick response, the prior administration's what the good senator claimed to boondoggle worked. During this comprehensive review by this administration, again, this administration is the root cause of this problem. They caused this. The problem is growing worse. It's not getting better. Congress, by supporting a double-layer fence around this Capitol for months, spent hundreds of millions of dollars keeping us safe and secure, recognizes that fence and fencing and walls work. Again, this fencing has been paid for. This wall has been paid for. $2 billion will be wasted. $3 million a day will be wasted. This is just common sense, and it will improve the security of this nation. And again, in 2006, this is a bipartisan type of effort. Building a 700 miles of fence was bipartisan, 80 to 19. It should be bipartisan day. I'm urging my colleagues, let's finish building this wall. Let's not waste billions of dollars of taxpayer money. I yield the floor. Mr. President. Senator from West Virginia. Uh, I ask unanimous consent to address the House for, or to address the Senate for several minutes on this amendment. Without objection. Thank you. Thank you. I rise in support of this amendment. I am the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Appropriations for Homeland Security. Uh, the President's budget request included a rescission of $2 billion that we, as members of this body, uh, put enacted it as the gentleman from Wisconsin has, has clearly illuminated. And at the same time, we're having a tremendous problem at our southern border. We all know this. We don't have the July numbers out yet, but we know that they're going to be in uh, apprehensions are going to be in excess of over 200,000 in one month. The July numbers also indicate that the number of unaccompanied children is the largest ever encountered in one month. There are currently now over 150 miles of wall system projects that we as Congress legally funded that are now in jeopardy of being canceled. When you go to the border, you see millions of dollars worth of steel slats lying on the ground that were to be constructed until President Biden canceled those projects. You know who else sees those border walls on the ground? Human traffickers, drug smugglers. I've been to the several, as we all have, been to the so southern border several times. Customs and Border Patrol agents have told us that a border wall is necessary as part of a system to stop the flow of illegal immigration and illicit drugs. The border wall is infrastructure. It's infrastructure to keep America safe, it's infrastructure to keep drugs out of this country, and it's infrastructure to control illegal immigration. I urge my colleagues to vote yes on the Johnson Amendment to prohibit the cancellation of contracts to build the border wall. Thank you. Mr. President. The Senator from Delaware. Uh, yeah. Mr. President, over the years, I've uh, made any number of trips to our 
nation's uh, southern border. Uh, I've also traveled extensively to uh, throughout Central America, and sometimes with the, uh, the author of this uh, legislation, with many colleagues, Democrat and, and uh, Republican. One of the people who's, I think, been to that part of the world more than me uh, is a guy who used to serve here in the Senate, later Vice President, that's our President uh, Joe Biden. The, uh, uh, there's a, a verse of scripture in the, in the New Testament, Matthew 25, which speaks to the least of these. And one of the things, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was thirsty, did you give me a drink? When I was a stranger in your land, did you welcome me? Did you welcome me? And uh, to the extent we've done, looked out for the least of these, and uh, we have a brighter future. But anyway, the reason I, I, I raise that, we have this moral imperative to look out for the least of these, and that includes people who end up on our borders looking for safe haven. The reason why, the reason why so many people continue to come to our borders from uh, Central America, especially Honduras, Guatemala, and Salvador, is because they live, lives, <laughs> live lives in, in fear, deprived of economic opportunity and hope, corruption, crime. You know, if, if any of us lived there with our families, we'd want to get out of there too and find a, a place uh, to go to with a brighter, a brighter future. Uh, Border security, uh, as, as the former chairman of the Homeland Security Committee, border security, enormously important. We need secure borders, no question about that. And there are a whole bunch of force multipliers which help provide the more secure borders, including barriers, including barriers. And I've supported them, so has the, uh, the, the gentleman who's former, also former chairman of the committee. We've traveled in that part of the world together. And one of the things we uh, fully agree on is what I just said. We could spend the next, you know, year, five years, 10 years, uh, securing our border, that's important. But if we don't address those root causes of why people are coming here, uh, they're still 10, 20 years from now, they'll still be coming. They'll still be coming. We've got to be smarter than, than, than that. I, uh, this is a shared responsibility. It's not all on the, the United States. Uh, I, I like to use the example, I uh, said to my colleague from West Virginia, I like to use the example of uh, Home Depot, which uh, Ron Johnson, Senator Johnson heard me use more, more than a few times. Uh, Home, Do Home Depot, their ad line is, you can do it, we can help. And in these countries where we're getting all this immigration uh, flow from, they can do it, but we can help. And one of the things we, uh, we set up under something called the Alliance for Prosperity a number of years ago, with de Democrat and Republican support, I think uh, with the support of uh, certainly uh, then Vice President Biden and, and uh, Senator McCain, uh, the late uh, John McCain, among the things that we need to focus on and we're doing under the Alliance for Prosperity is one, addressing uh, crime and violence. Two, addressing corruption. Uh, three, economic hope and opportunity. Those are the three buckets. We put money in those buckets. The expectation is the, those three countries put even more money in those buckets, matching us two, three, four, five dollars for every dollar we put up. And there are other countries that uh, we have an expectation for them to help. Their private company, or private businesses, there's an expectation for them to help. Nonprofits, there's an expectation for all of us. This is a shared responsibility. We have a, uh, uh, as the, the place where all these illegal drugs are coming from, and it's kind of sucking them, uh, moving those drugs through these three, three countries. We have uh, some moral responsibility to do something to help situation down there, not just at the border. So I, uh, with, that, uh, with that in mind, I'm, I'm not going to uh, support this, uh, this amendment. But uh, I would just note, I always look for common ground. The, the author of the amendment knows uh, full well, heard him talk about eloquently, about the need to go at uh, root causes. And uh, we've, uh, for as long as we've been working on this issue, all those years we've needed to work on root causes, and we still do today as well. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, I, I need to respond quickly. There are now two minutes evenly divided. If you want to talk about the root before, cause. Before a vote this, on the Johnson Mr. President. Amendment. Mr. President. The Senator from Wisconsin. Mr. President, I need to respond quickly. Uh, Senator Carper is talking about root causes. The root cause of the instability, the um, you know, primary cause of the violence in Central America is America's and Americans' insatiable demand for drugs. If you can solve that problem, you solve the root cause of the problem, you won't have the violence. But the root cause of this current crisis, because it was already solved, the root cause of this prime, current crisis is President Biden's policies. President Biden is the root cause. So if you want to fix this, we can fix it. 
secure the border, go back to the policies that worked. We're not going to be able to fix Central America until we end our insatiable demand for drugs. With that, Mr. President, I yield the floor. Mr. President, colleagues, uh, in about 48 hours, uh, about a third of the Senate is going to be on an airplane heading for Gillette, Gillette, Wyoming. And we're going to go to say goodbye to our friend and colleague, uh, Mike Enzi. I'll never forget where I was sitting about, I don't know, 20 years ago in, in the presiding officer, and Mike Enzi was literally standing almost right, right where you are, talking about the 80-20 rule and why they're so successful in the Health, Education, Labor, Pension Committee, but Senator uh, Kennedy and Mike Enzi, Democrat, Republican, how they're able to find the common cause and get stuff done. The 80-20 rule. I said to Mike Enzi that day, what's the 80-20 rule? And he said about 80% of the stuff Ted and I agree on, about 20% we don't. And what we do is we focus on the 80% where we agree. And uh, there is common ground here. I think that the, the gentleman from Wisconsin knows what it is. And I would ask that uh, in addition to talking about our differences, let's talk about where we agree and let's do good work there. Thank you. The question is on the amendment. Is there a sufficient second? There appears to be. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin, Mr. Barrasso, Mr. Bennett, no. 